But if I may give you an, an example, probably uh, I expected some of you may ask, you moved from APC to PDP. Uh, but if you check the records, it took us almost about two months sensitization. Uh, we set out committees, we identified our problems with the APC, we sent uh, representatives to all the local governments, they are on audio and video tapes, we met with all the constituencies, and we read out all the complaints, and we wrote out our complaints in writing, over 350 stakeholders in the state signed it, World Troop to Abuja, we met the then chairman, the acting chairman, Bisa Kande, we presented. We did all the civilized way of putting up our uh, issues. And in the end, we allowed the people to decide. It was the people really that decided we cannot accept this kind of frivolous arrangement and we have to leave. So that's why I said uh, a situation whereby somebody and as an elected person who we'll sits in Abuja and there is no evidence of consulting the constituencies and uh, you just pronounce the campaign uh, overnight is what I think we should discourage. I expect the constituencies to have a way of checks and balances, but this has to do with the level of education and awareness and of course poverty too is there. Uh, so a lot of... But this movement that happens from one political party to the other, I'm yeah. just wondering how much of an advantage does it convert? Take, for instance, Sokoto. Uh, we heard uh, uh, Senator Wamako say that, look, the defections that happen, the movement of the governor doesn't necessarily change anything because, one, he says they've got two senators in Sokoto still in APC. They've got seven members in the House of Reps staying in APC. They've got 12 members in the State House of Assembly staying in the APC. So he says, look, that doesn't mean it's going to give an advantage to uh, PDP in Sokoto State. Well, I agree. In fact, if you watch the crowds, uh, Tom Wall had his crowd. You can see it's a good crowd. The next uh, couple of days, uh, Wamuko had his own crowd. Uh, you can equally say that it was a large crowd. So that's why I said if you depend on this crowd, uh, you wouldn't make any uh, sincere assessment of the situation. So what can we use as your stick to measure? Well, I think uh, we should use the performance of the respective uh, elected personalities. What, really, what impact have they really brought to their constituencies? Is it uh, the fact that they are getting the support of remaining or moving? based on the conviction of the constituencies that uh, the, 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 uh, they see their representatives as performing or depending on the performance of their constituencies. Uh, so it's, it's all about one has to get to the constituency and find out. If you judge from a distance just by the crowds and what you read on the pages of papers, I don't think we're getting it right. Even though, as I said, to be fair to all the uh, democratic process, one can still claim that we are on the learning process. This movement in and out, I think, uh, is likely to continue until we get it right in electing the correct people. What into about the time. question of yes. SI getting it right in election? What yes. about the question of ideology? The, you know, that argument of no ideology for any political party, it seems like no, all the No, 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 I think uh, the, the ideology uh, we're talking about will, will emerge gradually. Uh, unfortunately, we have not gotten the right political stability since independence because of the several military interruptions. I'm sure if we had remained uh, where we were in the 50s and the 60s, uh, if you compare us with other countries, take Malaysia, for example. We're almost on the same page, at the same position in the 50s of Malaysia. Malaysia is almost close to getting to be an advanced nation. You can count on your fingers no more than four or five heads of states in Malaysia in the period of 60 years since independence. But ours, you lose count. We are talking uh, in, in, in two digits the number of heads of state. So we've got too many interruptions. The system, the military had not allowed us to learn through the process. That's why I'm arguing that all hopes are not lost. Mm. Uh, we're still learning gradually, and this kind of questions uh, will start being asked. Why, why, why? Yeah, when yeah. The, we have, we've had about almost 20 years of democracy. 
I mean, we've had politicians yeah. mm. who keep moving from one place. I don't get my ticket here. I go to the next place yeah. and hopefully get a ticket. Mm -hmm. it, 20 years, you say 20 years is not enough to formulate a kind of direction because right now it looks mm. as if there's no direction. No, no, no. no. I think, I think 20 past. years, uh, big as it may sound, I don't think it's enough. Even without this turbulence of moving from one public put, uh, platform to another, if you see the rate of turnover, take for example the Senate and House of Reps, any time we hold elections, even within the last 20 years you're talking about, you find that almost 70, 80 percent of the uh, elected uh, uh, representatives don't return. Uh, people should ask why, what's happening? We, we need to have some continuity in the process. So something must be wrong and I think it's largely to do with the level of our education and the level of poverty. These are all factors that uh, when people are not educated and they are poor, you see, with the very little uh, of what to eat will uh, sell out their questions. So I think well, 20 years, though long, but honestly... When you uh, say they the sell out their conscience or yeah. level of education and poverty, is yeah. that also... Um, is that part of what encourages the godfatherism factor? Yeah, because some of those that do not return are yeah. not returning because their political godfathers are saying, no, you're not going, this other person has to go. Yeah, I think the, the poverty and the lack of education, most people, most of the electorate expect an elected person to come back and share out money. And this is what has been going on. People are not asking what project have you brought, what policy, what program have you initiated as a legislator? Uh, that's why up till now the executive is quarreling with the legislator in what they call constituency projects. Uh, even this very government, 